What's happening, everybody? Steve here. We're back again at work here in the friendly confines of San Juan Sea Rep, the map room. Lots of excitement today. Today, we are going back to the non-radar world, the DSI world, the D2 world in specifics. So we're going to have a great time. Today is the Anne Hathaway lists Princess Juliana Diaries, right? No Anne Hathaway, no Julie Andrews. It's still fun, though, so don't worry. It's still going to make for a great presentation, not quite the feature film, but that's okay. Sitting down in D2 and working with Julianne is the most fun you can have in D2. Today's clearance delivery mixed with a little bit of non-radar separation and all points in between. I'm really excited because today we're going to cover one of my most favorite things to study, automation and the way... Flight data processing helps you complete your job and route assignment. I love routes. I love preferential routing. It's just such a good time. So let's jump right into this. I barely contain my excitement. Here we go. See you there. Okay, so this is titled The Royal Pains. Get it? Because Princess Juliana, you know, get it. Okay, very good. Uh, we'll get acquainted with preferential departure routing and how to use this helpful tool. We'll go over clearance phraseology and how it pertains to all facilities in Juliana's airspace mainly talking about the satellite airport, St. Eustatius, C.J. Lloyd, or Anguilla, or the Valley, St. Barth, and uh, Grand Cass. I'll go over non-radar techniques to deconflict the sector, not only for you, but for the R side as well, because, you know, you're a team member, so yay, go team. So, okay, let's jump right into it. Uh, off to some examples. Uh, ready, set, uh, let's go. Okay, so we're sitting here in the sector OSA amicably, and we see these proposal flight plans out of St. Martin, right? We take a look at the quick glance and we say, and we ask ourselves, are these flight plans the same? What was filed? Okay, learning point one. What the air crew dispatch airline uh, pilot filed will always be written in black lettering against a normal flight progress trip background. So if you see on the first two examples, whatever is below the shaded writing there is what the flight crew filed. What was computer assigned? Okay, so the opposite of that. You see the shaded lettering, right? How the background of the flight progress trip, that quasi green color is relieved by the black blocks, black rectangles, the shaded routing. That is what the computer assigned. Now the computer does this because it wants to help you. Chances are that the flight crew or the pilot, whoever filed the flight plan, omitted some little detail or maybe omitted a lot of details, right, between your departure point and some determined point along the route of flight. The computer is trying to help you by saying, hey, I noticed that there are some things missing here. Let me help you by putting in this shaded routing on top, and you should give this because this is going to help you facilitate this aircraft departing and going to that predetermined point of along their route of flight, get them, getting them there according to whether it be SOP or LOA routing. Okay, The computer has highlighted preferential departure routing to make sure that the route complies with LOA and SOP. As you see, the computer is trying its best to take it from the departure point, and somewhere in the en route stage is trying to tie it in to comply with some LOA, right? In this case, we have some of Miami examples here. These aircraft are all bound for Miami Center's airspace. It actually complies with R and Miami uh, center's letter of agreement. These root strings are adapted and stored to override the smallest and omitted detail or element, and that is true. Let's take a look at flight plan, the first one we have right there. We see that the air crew filed Princess Juliana Blue 520 St. Thomas Route 6 San Juan, Oconee Yankee Way 5 Dong Ku, Lima 454 Oconee Web, and onwards to Philadelphia. The computer did not like the fact that the filer forgot to file Papa Juliet Mike. You see there's no Papa Juliet Mike down there in the root string filed by the company. So there's our first thing. And the second thing is after Dong Ku, they file Lima 454 to Okonu. Well, we know if we study our map that Lima 454 does go through Okonu, or correction, Dong Ku. So the computer is looking for the exact syntax as it is written. This is a computer stored 
route of flight, and if it does not match exactly what the computer has, right, the exact thing that the computer has written in there and ready to override, then it will, in fact. Even though this flight plan is good, you can clear this aircraft as filed and will still comply. You see how the computer is helpful, but only to an extent. Uh, what else is missing? Let's go down to number two, and this one's kind of easy. This one is the Papa Julia mic is missing, right? They forgot to file the Princess Juliana VOR. And more often, that will usually be it. Or they file something in Miami's airspace. They'll file intermediate fixes on the airways leading to the New York and Miami boundary, which is at Lucti in this example. So without further ado, let's practice, right? Let's practice uh, one of them and uh, just for fun. So get your pen out. So test one, two, three, clear to Philadelphia Airport via Blue 520, St. Thomas, Route 6, San Juan, Oconee, Yankee 185, Don Ku, Direct Lucti, Lima 454 to Oconu as filed. Maintain flight level 150, squawk 3344. Pretty good clearance, right? We assigned initial altitude, we assigned the squawk, we did the dash A because they are cleared to destination airport. And if you notice, we read what was exactly written in black. We even did a little bit more to tie in the odd ended Lima 454 to a point further along the airway. But that is exactly what we gave, and that is exactly what we expect the aircraft to do, what Miami will expect the aircraft to do, what the computer wants the aircraft to do. Now, we would read the second one the same way. So let's go down to the third one. This is where easy breezy, you know, wonderful things come in because we see there's no shaded whatsoever, and the route of flight is absolutely perfect. It is exact leave the syntax and context that the computer is looking for, hence there's no shaded. So this one's gonna be nice and short. Test one, two, three, cleared to the Philadelphia airport via Blue 520 St. Thomas is filed. Maintain flight level 150, squawk 3655. Perfect, that's exactly how you would read that. You could even make it shorter. I didn't wanna give this example because sometimes it sets a bad precedent, but you could say test one, two, three, clear to the Philadelphia airport as filed, right? Because everything is perfect. So there's another suggestion for you. So good job, we're gonna take a couple uh, more examples here. We're gonna take a couple of those in and do some clearances and just practice that. I'll see you at the next slide. Okay, so as you notice, the same flight plans this time, but we put this slide in to present another opportunity for you to take a look, maybe pause it, practice, practice with your strip marking and stuff like that, but also just a more zoomed up look at it. And you see how the computer is assigning these preferential departure routes with little elements or, you know, almost negligible elements missing, right? We see that if you don't file Papa Juliet Mike, right, a, you'll get overridden, right? If you file or list too many fixes along Lima 454, it's going to throw in the preferential departure in there. So it's very persnickety, but just remember, it's aimed to help you out. And just think of it this way. If you are new to this, right, new to training on the D side, just remember, you cannot go wrong with reading what exactly is written in the shaded routing, right? Because the shaded routing takes it from the departure point all the way up to where the preferential departure route extends, right? After Lima 454, or if you go down to the second one, after Lucky, we don't care, right? We satisfied the requirements of the preferential departure routing assigned to us, right? What is what is agreed upon. So just think of it that way. You can never go wrong by reading what is shaded in black. Now, if you start getting really good at your clearances and you're reading them really quickly and you're taking this all in and seeing that there is no difference, right? Only semantics between what is written and uh, non-shaded and the shaded part, then you know, then you can start getting adventurous and saying as filed or cleared as filed or you know via this and that because that's it's the same thing, right? But it is up to you to find those differences and reconcile them. Say, hey, the pref routing is exactly what they filed, just a minor little missing matter there. So just uh, keep that in mind. Okay, onwards and upwards to the next slide. Okay, so we're back at it now. We have these two test flight plans, and now let's work on our relay clearance, right? We know that Princess Juliana, the airport, Tango November Charlie Mike is located on one island 
as is the facility. The facility is co-located at the airport. The other airports that are in their airspace, St. Eustatius, Grand Case, St. Barth, and in this case, C.J. Lloyd, are located at different islands, right? Smaller islands that are not connected, nor physically co-located with the facility itself. So we know this is our perfect opportunity for us to practice our from to via, because as soon as we give this clearance to the controller sitting or standing at Juliana on the island, right, they are going to call the tower or air crew and relay the clearance. So from to via is great phraseology here. Keep that in mind when dealing with the satellite airports in their airspace. And yet again, we see in example one that the pilot filed exactly what the preferential route looks like. So hence no shaded. But the second one, if you see what exactly the pilot filed, TQPF, CJ Lloyd Airport Direct Juice, the computer doesn't like that because they forgot PJM, right? And other things too, uh, Haggett, it, it will actually, the preferential departure reading is going to over, override it and put in whatever it has. So no big deal, right? We don't care about this one as much. This is a good example for this very reason, because we don't care what the initial route segment is inside of Princess Juliana's airspace. We really don't, right? We're, it is not up to us to assign C.J. Lloyd, Papa Juliet, Mike, Juice, or, you know, C.J. Lloyd, St. Martin, Blue 520, no, that's whatever they want. However they get them to juice, we really don't care about. So just keep that in mind, right? You could uh, make your transmissions or your phone calls a lot shorter by knowing these small details, these intricacies, and getting rid of them. But here, let's practice with the one uh, down below. Or it doesn't matter which one. They're, we've kind of decided they're both the same. So test one, two, three, clear to the Tamiami Airport via... Blue 520, St. Thomas is filed. Maintain flight level 150, squawk 4722. I'm sorry, I forgot my departure airport there. D-A, 150, perfect. Good job with that. Let's just keep it going. A couple other things to consider too whenever you're working D2 or even A2, right? And you see some weird filings uh, of routes outside of Julianus airspace. Just keep some of this in mind, right? Note how there is not enough of a route string to have the PDR override in either of these two cases, right? This aircraft filed Juliana, Dorado, Grand Turk, Nassau, Miami, and the second time they filed Nassau Direct West Palm. But if you look a little further, right, dig a little deeper, do some investigating, and you full route, right, flight plan, read out the call sign, you'll see that the computer is okay with this aircraft departing on some ambiguous, weird route, right? That is up to us to fix, right? No reminder, no real safety net or safeguard in place. But as the aircraft departs, it makes its way into the heart of Miami Center's airspace, you know, arriving Miami from the Southeast or West Palm from the Southeast. We see some preferential arrival routes get inserted there. So there's something to help out uh, our fellow controllers in Dade County uh, assign and follow through on good routing into their respective airports. So interesting observation. Doesn't make you do anything, but it helps down the road. It'll help those controllers out. So note that for downline sectors, preferential rival routes will kick into place. So the aircraft may be cleared on established routes. This is for selected terminal areas, usually within the center for which the flight data processor exists. Exactly. So expect this to take care of a lot of airports in South Florida, right? But don't expect it to go too much farther than the state of Florida because our flight data processor is Miami's flight data processor and vice versa. So we can only do so much within its, I guess, area of responsibility. Now, this is a good time for you to introduce that you should be studying your preferential routings to the South Florida terminal areas. It's easy to find whether um, it's readily available. You can always find, you know, what the prep routings are because it's good to know this is good for you to fix so you don't have to look this up. This is a great candidate for, you know, putting them on Yankee 308. Well, actually, you know what, let's just go over it together and let, let, let's do this one together. We'll leave the West Palm Beach so you can practice, maybe look up the pref routing for West Palm, but here we go. Test, and let's pretend that we have to give a full route clearance. So test one, two, three, this will be a full route clearance. The bottom is ready to copy. Julia says ready to copy. Test one, two, three, clear to Miami, Bay County Airport via Blue 520, St. Thomas, direct FECO, 
Inky 308, Fowey, Flipper 7, Direct, Maintain Flight Level 150, Squawk 4750. Perfect. See how that worked? You would do that. And the funny thing about this example is, if we were to input that into the machine exactly how I said, chances are we'd probably get some PDR in there because I gave some shortcuts. I didn't give Blue Flight 20 St. Thomas Route 6 Sam Juan, a Coney and Q30. You see how I kind of trimmed it there. So just keep that in mind. Great to practice. Why don't you take care of the one, the West Palm Beach, find the preference running and practice that. And just know that if you do take little shortcuts, right, your little liberties, which you are perfectly allowed to do, that preferential departure routing is going to be persistent and trying to apply itself to every situation. So, all right, we'll see you at the next slide. Okay, so the PDR has overridden the filed route of flight in the first three examples. Why did the aircraft file, what did the aircraft file, excuse me, to make this happen? Well, I'll tell you what. It's all about the context. As we saw in the past two examples, the aircraft filed direct or just a couple few random BORs or nav aids, and then nothing happened. But here we see that they left out a lot of stuff, but the prep routing kicked in. And why is that? Well, one thing jumps out at you. It may not be glaringly obvious. At least these various test flight plans put in a boundary fix between Miami and New York or Jacksonville and Miami or Miami uh, center sector boundary fixes. Okay, you see how that is? So the computer must recognize that they, hey, they filed Leton, Rena, and Lenholm respectively in their route of flight. And that must trigger the computer, right, to say, hey, guess what? Well, if they wanna get to Leton, Rena, and Lenholm, and they did not file what exactly I have for them, have stored, ready to override, then I will take the following action. So think of it that way. Like I said before, you can never go wrong by reading exactly what the computer has assigned. And you see each of these PDRs that apply themselves, right? The computer applies it to these route of flights, match ends in Leton, ends in Leton. Ends in Rena, Rena's in the flight plan. Lenholm, Lenholm. So it actually tells you where to read up to and including to, and then that's it. So with that being said, let's practice this one, the second one. Test one, two, three, clear to the Wilmington Airport via Blue 520, St. Thomas, Route 6, San Juan, Acuni, Yankee 185, Rena as filed, maintain flight level 150. Squawk 5656. Five, six. Perfect. As you see, we just tied it in and we were able to go as filed after that, right? Do the prep routing, as filed after that, you're solid. All right, we're making our way through this. Good job. The automation will also help you out for aircraft within San Juan Center, right? Two terminal areas inside of San Juan Center, it will help us there as well. And I'll go over the details why. You see the test 123 filed Juliana directs San Juan and they filed 120. We know when we study that if you're going to go any altitude above 100 from Juliana San Juan, you have to go over uh, Gouda and then join Red 760 to St. Croix, Route 4B to San Juan. And you see this is no exception. The automation is saying, hey, man, they filed 120 and they filed direct, but here's a good pref routing. So why don't you assign that? And we would. We would follow through with that. We would. We would. Let's just do it. Test 123. This will be a full route clearance. I get a copy. Test one, two, three. Clear to San Juan Airport via Red 760, St. Croix, Route 4 Vita, San Juan. Maintain flight level 120, squawk 5656. Five, five, Perfect. Same thing here. We see that the aircraft filed flight level 120. They filed over the Blue 520, St. Thomas Route 6, San Juan, which is standard routing. But the computer also knows because of the altitude stratum filed that they were going to have to fly that. Yet again, kicks in, helps us direct. Juliana directs St. Croix, passes in preferential routing. What is nice about too, there's some flexibility. See the air crew filed for 100, but they want to file this, right? They want to fly this is what they found. It won't make them file or won't make them 
uh, they won't assign the preferential routing to them. So interesting things to keep in mind. So, all right, let's keep it going. Okay, so we had fun with the PDR, just tip of the iceberg into the world of automation, but you see how it is designed to help you out and to facilitate faster coordination and really just provide you a safeguard, that safety net to make sure that you are clearing these aircraft as they should be according to LOA and SOP. So that's good. So now let's get into some separation here. So head-on situations happen a lot in Juliana, right? Not too much, not at all over Sligo or Juice because by LOA, we know that those are outbound routes over Juice, inbound routes over Sligo, nothing goes out over Sligo, nothing comes in over Juice. But that leaves a lot of other fixes, Trinky, Manolo, Gouda, Dandy, up for grabs. So when faced with head-on traffic, ask yourself, is there a better way to just stopping below, right? As you see here, we have a Gouda estimate, uh, 19037 at 9 or 0. Let's just finish the coordination for them. And uh, we have an outbound at 19035, right? And we have to give this clearance. Remember that your goal should not only be to ensure positive non-radar separation, but to find an initial establishment of a radar route that will enable the R side to climb the aircraft as quickly and conflict-free as possible, right? You're not only just doing your job and hanging your hat on that, even though it is a great job in positively separating aircraft and dealing with Juliana, I mean, you've earned your, you know, wings and, and halo to go to heaven, but you should also help out your buddy sitting next to you because you should spell out a route of flight that's gonna keep them clear, not having to stop at really low intermediate altitudes and then having them to wait to pass and climb. No, try to find a way for them to make the in route segment of the flight happen faster, right? Get them climbing, get them sped up, all that fun stuff. So let's use this example. We kind of locked in here, test 3344, altitude choices are limited, right? Eight right now as it stands, right? If they're initial departure times 1935 but move them down to the uh move them down to dandy or move them to the blue 520 you can do you can do anything right that this just knowing your airspace is so helpful and finding your way out of this so i'm going to use dandy just for fun right i know i can get them higher no traffic over dandy okay so i would say test 3344 clear to the barinkin airport via direct Dandy. Direct Barinkin. Maintain flight level one five zero. Squawk four four five five. Perfect. Look what you did. You made you moved that airport, or of course you moved that aircraft down to the south, and now they have no traffic over Dandy and they're able to climb. So exchange Gouda for Dandy for inbounds or outbounds. Be sure to tie the alternate segment back into the root string, right? Make sure you're always tying it in, right? If you're going to disrupt the clearance or what they filed, make sure you tie it back in, which in this case we did. We could have did Blue 522, right? Blue 520, um, Dorado Direct Brinkin or something like that, right? Something to that effect. So good job with that. Something to keep in mind as we uh, separate aircraft. So, oh, sorry, guys. Perfect. Good job. Okay, so we're back at it. And look at this here. Let's fix all of these, right? We have this aircraft coordinated dandy at 1941 for level 150 with the code of that. And this guy wants to go out dandy, right? Going to my lock. Well, this is easy. Instead of stopping him at 14, we can go test 2344, clear to Bonaire Airport via direct Gouda. Direct my lock. Upper Amber 516 to Acora. Direct. Maintain flight level 150. Squawk 4455. Perfect, right? Because after Gouda, that aircraft's radar identified and the R side can use any kind of separation. All the rights and privileges afforded to radar controller by using radar, they'll be able to use to get this aircraft climbing, right? You did your job. Well, good job with that. So here we go. Ah, Trinky, right? 1933 at 80, zero, squawking that. And we have this aircraft, right? Yet again, this Test 3344 going to Bermuda. It wants to go up Lima 461, right? So our hands are kind of tied yet again. So 
Here we go. Test 3344. Clear to the L.F. Wade Bermuda Airport via Direct Manolo. Depart Manolo heading 010. Zero. Radar vectors. Oh, Paul. Maintain flight level 150. Squawk 4455. Five. See what we did there? Traffic over Trinky. We moved them north and east over Manolo. Manolo, they can climb. And if we don't talk to them for a little bit. If, if the frequency is congested, they're going to hit Manolo and head northbound. The 010 heading will parallel Lima 461 for any other traffic. It's actually a very handy way out and a way to get aircraft climbing faster and radar identified quicker and less time in the lower altitude stratum. So keep this in your mind. Keep this in mind and it's in your toolbox now for you to use. So, okay, let's keep it going. Okay, so what happens here? No boundary fix associated with this particular flight plan. And this will happen, right? Aircraft will fly Lima 329 to the north. There's no boundary fix, right? It goes from the St. Martin VOR up to Kika, right? But there's no boundary fix, right? For Princess Juliana's airspace and our airspace. Uh, so what happens? We see that there's no PDR that kicked in, right? Because we don't have one set up for this, right? But just use your imagination, right? You know where Keek is at, and you've studied your map long enough to know that you can't let the air you should the aircraft should be over boundary fixes. So here's what I suggest you do: make a decision. Keek is north, almost exactly north of Juliana. You can go over Trinky or go over Blue 520. And whenever you do, just just go with it. So you know your map well enough at this point to know that you have to assign a boundary fix and just spell out the initial route segment. So let's try it. Test 3344. Heavy. Clear to the Toronto Airport via Direct Trinky. Direct Kika as filed. Maintain flight level 150. Squawk 3705. Perfect. Well done. Well, you woke up this morning, you got yourself a gun. Supervisor told you were the chosen one, right? Who watches as apprentice? I do. And that satisfactory look as Tony makes his way from New York back to New Jersey. Well, that's the feeling you should be feeling whenever you rock that D2 session. So just know that we, today we provided you some tools in your tool belt, how to deal with preferential departure routing, right? How it aims to help you do your job better, right? has that safety net to say, hey, guess what? I noticed that they didn't file this. Let me help you spell out what this route should be, right? So that's always helpful. We learned a little bit of light separation. We learned some clearance items, a little bit of strip marking, you know, lots of fun. Quick session today. I hope you guys had fun. I know I did. We're here at work trying to get as much information as we can to you, especially uh, Princess Julian, you're going to be doing this a lot. You're going to be doing this a lot downstairs. So it's good to get that phraseology down pat and to know how you can separate these aircraft uh, without really thinking about it, right? This will become second nature to use uh, different fixes, whether inbound or outbound, um, and know when to say cleared as filed or when you have to give a full route clearance or know just how to deal with that, you know, that distracting shaded routing, right? When you have to say it and when you don't. So I hope you got something out of this. I know I sure did. It's always fun learning this stuff again and delving into it and exploring it and finding the why. Um, it's Steve here. I hope you guys had a fantastic time. I know I did. And remember, keep your separation just like your attitude positive. I'll see you at the next lecture. See you, man.